be a nurse. In 1994, I gave birth to my son, Jameer. I was a young 20-year-old single mom, and I didn't have a pocket kitchen or a window to throw it out of. I worked so many jobs trying to take care of my son, but also trying to go to college. At that time, I wanted to be a teacher. I actually moved here from New York to go to college, but I had a little too much fun, and I got <laughs> pregnant kind of quickly. But I still tried to go to school off and on over the years. Even taking my son to classes would be sometimes. But something would always happen. I would either fail the class because I was too tired to study, or I didn't have a babysitter, or I couldn't afford the tuition payments, or I needed to work overtime. At some point I said, this college thing doesn't seem to be working out. And so began a slew of my many careers. If I'm not gonna be a teacher, what should I do next? So. I became a hairstylist. And for many years, I made people look beautiful on the outside, and in a lot of ways, healing them on the inside, too, just by being a listening to near. Because you know you guys tell your stylist everything, right? <laughs> <laughs> but eventually, I got tired of that. So I said, what should I do next? I had just purchased my home as a single mom, so I said, maybe I'll help other single mothers become homeowners. So I became a real estate agent. And I helped many single mothers realize their dream of home ownership. But eventually, I got tired of that. <laughs> and so I asked myself, what should I do next? I knew I still wanted to help people, but this time I wanted to dig a little bit deeper. At that time, I was on a spiritual journey, and I had just been introduced to some principles of Buddhism. And one of those principles talks about how we are always trying to alleviate our human self. So I knew I wanted my next career to be where I was doing just that for others. Maybe I'll be a nurse. So the funny thing is I actually come from a family of nurses. Growing up with a nurse mom is everything that you could ever imagine. All the hugs, love, and cuddles when me and my siblings were sick, and all the love, caring, and affection we could ever need or want. My mom and my grandmother were both nurses, and growing up with them, they were just always so compassionate and full of love. The two of them is where my desire comes from to want to help others. In 2012, I was 38 years old, and my now 17-year-old son just graduated from high school. As I prepared to get him off to college, he asked me a question that I would never forget. And let me add, he was the valedictorian of his class, too. Yes. As I prepared to get him off to college, he asked me a question that would change my life forever. He said, Mom, why don't you go to school, and we can be in school together? The son that I put my college career on hold for was now standing in front of me, taller than me, with full facial hair, asking me to go back to school now. <laughs> I said, Jameer, I'll look into it, but let me just get you off to school first. And he said, no, Ma, I want you to do it now. <laughs> and so I did. When I went to register for classes, I was terrified. The woman at the desk said, ma'am, the last time you were here, you were on academic probation. And, <laughs> and you're probably not going to get financial aid because you still owe us money. Mm. And you'll need to write a letter saying why we should let you back in school and how your situation is different now. Well, I was overwhelmed by all of that, but somehow I made it through to my first day of class. Mm. When I walked into the classroom, I walked into a sea of 18-year-olds. Mm. And in that moment, I was afraid, intimidated. And quite honestly, I felt old. Mm. I remember I excused myself to the bathroom. And when I got in there, I locked the door behind me. And I put my back against the stall and I cried. Mm. Ugly cried. Self-doubt was whispering to me, what are you doing? You don't belong here. Not as young as you used to be, as quick as you used to be. But then I had to laugh at myself. I said, girl, it's just the first day. <laughs> <laughs> together and I took my old self back to class. <laughs> Somehow, class after class, semester after semester, year after year and after struggle after many struggles, in a complete full circle moment in 2016, my son and I graduated from college together. Woo -hoo! Yes! Woo -hoo! A few months later, I started my very first nursing job at the University of Maryland Medical Center. I could not sleep the night before my first day. I couldn't wait to put on my brand new scrub and my very expensive all black stethoscope that I purchased for graduation. I was determined I was going to be a kick ass nurse. 
When I got to the unit, I met my preceptor. Her name was Anastasia, I'll never forget her. She was the first nurse I met that I knew I wanted to emulate my nursing skills after. She was so confident as she moved through the shift, assessing the patient, juggling and prioritizing all their needs. I said, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do all this. I might even figure out what I'm gonna do next. <laughs> somehow, I made it through. And over the next two years, I would go on to win many awards on that unit. Mm. One for Nurse with the Biggest Heart, and another for a most compassionate nurse with the name of Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. I worked on the med surge floor, which is kind of like the hodgepodge of nursing. So many different patients were on this unit. I once had a patient that came from the prison, and she tried to harm herself by swallowing a battery, a screw, and a razor. Mm. She was so determined not to go back to jail that when she eliminated those things from her body, she stuck her hand in the toilet and picked them up and swallowed them again. Yeah. I also had an elderly patient whose family couldn't care for her anymore. And so they were going on vacation, and they brought it to the hospital, mm. but they never came back for her. Mm. And my homeless patients, now they were my favorite, because they always knew exactly what to say to make sure they had a warm place to sleep. And some hot <laughs> I took care of hundreds of patients on that unit, and I gave them all the highest level of care, no matter what walk of life they came from. Three years into my nursing journey, COVID hit. And initially, I was really excited. I was like, yes, front lines, this is what I signed up for. But then I got my first patient. She was a 29-year-old Asian female that just came back from visiting her family in Wuhan, China. Mm -hmm. And my excitement turned to fear very quickly. At that time, there was no vaccine, and it took almost a week for COVID results to come back. Fortunately, she didn't have COVID, but she's just one of many patients that I would take care of with COVID over the next two and a half years. Mm. Also became a travel nurse during the pandemic, which was pretty cool. <laughs> and it was a tough time to be a nurse, but it was also a very rewarding time as well. I'm currently a kidney transplant coordinator, and I help patients that are trying to get off dialysis and get on to the kidney transplant. One thing I know is how important it is for people of color to see healthcare professionals that look like them. Mm -hmm. When I walk into the clinic and greet my patients, I greet them like they're my friends. And I can see the instant look of relief on their face when I walk into the room. I love being a nurse. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even feel like work to me. It's the most trusted profession in the world. You can Google that. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it does get stressful, and I do find myself asking, what should I do next? <laughs> but I haven't gotten tired of it yet, and I look forward to being here for many, many years. To